So we're all wrapped up here at the Thornbury Surfacing Stadium after today's 2-1 defeat to Maidstone. We're joined by Captain, uh, Captain Kieran Parcell, goal scorer Tom Mayhew and uh, standing goalkeeper for the day, Nyka. Nyka, we'll start with you first. Probably a bit of a strange week for yourself, mate, getting that phone call early doors. Two training sessions, Tuesday, Thursday, and then on the Saturday you come up against the league champions elect. Good performance, though, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, it was good to be back out playing. Good stuff. And obviously you've come to us, I believe, from... Uh, what was it Coventry where at the moment I think it's all in the lads are saying so not currently affiliated to any club at the moment you obviously no. stepped in for today I suppose the big aim for yourself is to put yourself in the shop window from this one is it yeah good man Tom uh, we caught up last week um, you know we were talking about you know defensive defensive midfielder holding midfielder loves a pass right and left loves a tackle loves a header and then you go and pull out a 35 yard one the goal in off the crossbar do you want to talk us through that one mate because it might need some explaining I think it was just instincts I think I think if someone put a cross in Danny maybe and then it just fell out on the edge of the box and I think the best option was to shoot, there's no point passing there on the edge <laughs> of the box. Well, it's a little strike from yourself young man, I think there was a few of us that were sat there in the stands and various of us and we sort of, uh, we lost ourselves a little bit and I think I nearly fell over the Maidstone commentary team when it hit the back of the net but uh, you know, unfortunately it wasn't the uh, the clincher that we wanted today, I think you know, pretty good value for a point, <coughs> you know, we've battled hard but you know, Luke has come out and showed his quality as well there and put one across the other side. Yeah, I think it obviously it would have meant a lot more if it got a point or three points, but I think we showed we got more than enough to get in the playoffs and we chat we basically battered them second so half. Skipper, we'll move on to you. Obviously long start long standing Chippenham player now we say every time we get in front of the camera, you know, with the new boys coming in with Nike and Tom, the two lads in from Swindon, <coughs> Callum Levi, you know, we've seen a good rotating policy, particularly from Swindon and of course from uh, Bristol Rovers throughout the course of the season with lone players coming in. Doesn't seem to be an accident. They all hit the mark and uh, you know get off nice and quick. You know, you boys, big credit to you. You must bed them in well. Yeah, we do, and um, that's a big part of my job as well. As being captain is to make the, the lone players and obviously um, even the academy boys feel welcome. And um, to be fair, every single one of them that's come through the door this season, they've um, they've been a credit, and yeah, long may that continue. So to stay with yourself for this one, Kirk, because you know it's uh, the obvious the obvious elephant in the room, uh, Mister. Mr. Referee has just left and uh, he's, he's gone off with his, uh, with his pay packet and he's uh, been nicely fed by the football club but I think a lot of the players out there, including supporters, maybe felt he did a slight disservice at the end there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've got to be careful with what I said but, and I'm not one to come out and, and criticise referees and things like that but they're big moments that change games. Um, I think we, we had quite a fair bit against us today. I don't know if it was because they had a big crowd or, or whatnot but um, yeah, there were certainly a few... Um, decisions that possibly could have gone away. But listen, we've got, we've got to concentrate on our own our own stuff. Um, I think we, we created a bit more in the second half. Um, I think they just played the, the way they play. I think they, they played quite well and it's, it's, it's effective. And um, yeah, like I said, the decisions at the end, um, they've got to be better. So for a bit of context uh, for those who uh, been listening that may have may not know or seen the decision today. He moved that break down the right hand side. He's uh, he's gone past his fullback. Credit to him. Uh, Jerome Binham Williams is a big guy. Uh, the matchup wasn't great. You know, Mo I think running after him at one point got swatted away like an insect. But um, he's got round the other side of Binham Williams. He's gone round <coughs> round the goalkeeper, and um, I believe the referees come over at the end and said to us all there that uh, minimal contact, but not enough to give a penalty. Certainly not enough. You know, he wasn't brave enough to give the booking for the for the dive. Wasn't brave enough to give the decision. And I think, yeah, we'll move it on to yourself, Tom. Tom, you know, in on loan at the moment, so might not have to necessarily be so careful as Kieran, as it were, to you know give your opinion. But you weren't a million miles away from that when he went round. Got to be a penalty, hasn't it? Oh, I thought it was a stonewaller. I think all their players were saying it. Their keeper even said it. I think to some players, and I think you've seen them in the Premier League last night with Chris Wood. Just because he's going away from goal, it doesn't matter. But I think maybe the ref thought because he was going away from goal, but. He's clearly taken that. Mo isn't someone that goes down either. We've seen him battling all day against that Williams, and he doesn't go down lightly. And he would have had to be taken out to go down, otherwise, he would have just gone past him and scored. So, if there wasn't contact, he wouldn't have gone down. It's uh, certainly one for, the, uh, one for the archives. I think you know, the analysts will get over and have a look at the look. I think most people that are on the right hand side, including the footage we picked up, it shows you know, it's a clear penalty, and unfortunately, the uh, referee still fits. Uh, to wave it away, but it was you know, a common theme of the afternoon. Nyka, uh, we didn't seem to didn't seem to pick up too much really for us. Uh, I mean, it was at one point you know, we had a I think a real nailed on 
shout for Zaid as Zaid's gone down the left hand side and cut across the penalty area, nothing given. You know, Zaid's gone into the into the box on the <coughs> keeper, nothing given. We've been on Williams striking out after the you know, keeper spill. Um, it's got to be an interesting one for yourself to get those kind of those viewpoints. Really, you see the whole of the pitch from there. He's not had the uh, the greatest of games, but you know, it was, there were chances there for to chair for Chipman today. Yeah, from when I'm the other side of the pitch, you can see that it's a clear pen or been a foul, and the referee's a lot closer to it than I am. It's frustrating when decisions don't go your way. I suppose the linesman as well, he's probably got one of the best views in the house. He's only, what, 10 yards away from it, adjacent to it, where it was. I think at uh, this level of football, those officials have got to be making those calls. I think at any level, they've got to be making those calls. I mean, if you were, uh, if you were in golf for Mason today and uh, that break goes around you, um, it's, a, it's a penalty, isn't it? Yeah, from a keeper's perspective, I mean, how many, I mean, how many times in a, in a fairly short career for yourself, only 20 years old, and like, uh, you know, when, it, when a man goes around you and you wrap your arms around the legs as you pass it, the last man a goal, not only is he lucky if he's going to see a penalty, it's got to be a red card as well. If he's going to score, you're going to make your contacts with him, try and put him off, but you know you risk giving away a pen, which is what happened today. Obviously, the risk paid off. It's got there, haven't they? And I, mean, I suppose it's a little bit of luck that you need when you're at the top of the league. So, Nika, for yourself now, mate, it's, uh, it's back to the grind, is it, yo? I yeah. assume going to find, a, find, a, find another club. From all of us at Chipman Town, mate, thank you very much for stepping in today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you between the sticks and I'm sure the captain will probably move on and echo his sentiments, but really pulled us out of a hole there today, so thank you from all of us, Nika. Tom, uh, tough game next, mate. You know, uh, when you talk about games in this level coming thick and fast, when you signed on loan, you must have signed up at seven cup finals and thought, Jesus, look at that fixed list. Maidstone today, I think we proved very much that you know, we're well within our rights to go up against these sides. We've given them a great game today and, like you say, battered them for the second half and possibly deserve something at the end. Tricky game next up, Stalking Wanderers, second in the league, the only team really that can stop Maidstone from walking off with the National League South title. It's got to be a case of going down there and trying to do uh, our today's today's opponents a bit of a favour really, isn't it? Yeah, well I think well, they do play on Astro, which I think would definitely help us. I think there's a record this season, that's, that's what I said about chipping and playing on Astro this year. It's been pretty much every game to win. And we proved today that if Maidstone are top and Dorking in a second, we can more than match them up. I think I've uh, I think I've the official stats on that. I think we lost one 0 to Maidstone on 4G with a Spencer Hamilton penalty, and we drew two all um, uh, Eastbourne uh, on a 4G after a, a certain mercurial centre half decided to commit a last man foul. And uh, yeah, we played for the best part of that game with I think it was 70 minutes, wasn't it, with, minutes, with, yeah. with 10 men, and they only got back into it with the last minute shout with a penalty. And you know, on 4G um, with the way that we play football, um, we certainly got to back ourselves here in this one, surely. I mean, with the boys at the back, resilient as ever. Will Richards creeping back towards fitness, Spence is back, seems like he's going to hold up for a little bit longer. But uh, certainly with these lads in the midfield now, with the likes of Rossi, with the likes of Tom, with the likes of you know, Hanksy playing really, really well at the moment. You know, you've got quick players like Zayn, you've got quick players like Mo, and of course Jordy Young and Alfie Santos, we know what they're uh, capable of doing on any uh, on any pitch. So it's got to fill you with full of confidence heading towards Dorking, knowing that you're going to have a tough game, but knowing you're more than capable. Yeah, definitely. And these are the games you want to be playing in as a player. and. Obviously, it's good for the club that we're in. The, still, I think we're only what two points still off the playoffs. So, I think we dropped to eleventh, but I think you know it's, it's such a mess around there at the moment that yeah. any any win can drop someone from sixth to eleventh yeah. to twelfth. You know, there's games at the bottom half today that made no sense. At one point, I think Welling were beating Ebbsfleet. I think you know Eastbourne were losing a Slough. I think all of that course corrected itself. But like you say, it's a, it's a, it's a real messing around there. That seventh spot is really up for anyone. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, it's it's good to be playing for something. Towards the end of the season, and we all believe in in that change room that we can we can get that seventh spot, and we'll keep taking it one game at a time. Um, obviously, starting with Dorking next week, it's going to be a tough game, um, but them games are the ones that suit us a lot more uh, than the others. So yeah, we're going to go we'll go there. We take the positives out of today, and we'll work hard next week in training, and then we'll take it from there. But um, yeah, the belief still beliefs as high as it can be in the in the camp at the moment. So. Yeah, we'll go there with, with full of confidence still. They're going to owe you one as well for the last time you uh, you met Dorking, uh, for again, for those a uh, bit of context. Last time Dorking Wanderers rocked up at Little Chippenham with their aspirations of walking over us, they found themselves on the receiving end of a 4-1 beasting. Um, Harry Parsons' first half hat-trick, obviously not with us anymore. I think Ricky Aguiar added a fourth, obviously again, not with us, but you know, testament to these boys that are coming in and doing the business. Yeah, we were a very different side to the one that played Dorking first time round, but um, again, very capable. Yeah, definitely, and like I said, with the, we've obviously got a lot more new loanies in now, and they've all settled in well. Um, we're the most together in a group that I've probably been a part of, so um, that goes a long way. And um, like I said, we've just got to keep taking it one game at a time, and um, 
who knows where we'll be towards the end of the season. Perfect. Well, I think we've we'll, uh, got more than enough there, boys. Obviously, today it's it's not quite come up for us, really. I had a 2-1 defeat to Maidstone, but from myself and Matt, from all of the guys on the media side, and obviously all of us here at the club, don't think there's any shame in uh, losing to the Champions-elect 2-1 on your own patch. You know, it's a uh, bit of a thrown ever experience, obviously, with Nika coming in at last minute again. Thank you very much, young man. And, um, you yeah, know, we can take all the positives from that. And the fact is, you yeah, up until the 90th minute, we were stuck in the game and we were still in there. So we moved the Dorking next week. Hopefully we can uh, put a few uh, put a few wrongs and make them right. Boys, thank you very much for your Cheers. time today. Let's get in the bar and have a drink. Cheers. Oh, super.